Welcome to the uh, second cabinet meeting uh, by Zoom. Obviously, a few technical difficulties getting everybody in, but we've got all cabinet members in at the moment. So, welcome to cabinet members, welcome to our officers as well, and also welcome to uh, members of the public and also other councillors that are tuning in to this um, meeting today. Um, agenda is available for those that don't have it on the uh, Borough Council's website, the agenda which we're working through today. And the first item on that is apologies. I don't have any apologies because all cabinet members are here. Item two is declarations of interest. Do you have any from cabinet members for any items that are on the agenda? No. Okay. Uh, minutes of the previous meeting that we um, we had on, on page five, Wednesday the 22nd of April. Can we read those correct record, please? And if somebody would like to unmute and propose that. I propose them. Agreed. Okay. And seconded. Brilliant. Thank you. I'll second it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, thank you, Steve. Um, and then we move to the first item on the agenda, which is our coronavirus update and recovery plan. This is the second uh, paper we've had to uh, cabinet uh, since the coronavirus crisis. It's um, in two parts. One is obviously the um, the issues that we've encountered since the last cabinet meeting, and then also. A, a large part of it on the recovery, but to be focused now on the recovery. Uh, the report on, on how we've dealt with council services, uh, supported the vulnerable, support for business, and the ongoing financial impact. Uh, and then the second part, as I said, is the recovery. So we'll look first at um, council services. Obviously, I must say, right at the beginning, a thank you to all council staff for the work they put in again it, during this uh, really difficult time. Um, and we've got a lot of lot of challenges. We've got a lot of help that we're giving to the community, and we've got a lot of financial issues to deal with as well because of the coronavirus pandemic. But under two point two on the report, it, it states there um, a raft of um, headings for services. I'm going to go around cabinet members now and ask them for their comments. First of all, I'm going to go to um, Jill. Please don't leave. Jill, could you unmute? Sorry, Sam, could you repeat that? I really can't hear you very well. The sound's terrible. Okay, is anybody else having trouble with the sound? No, can you hear me okay now? Yes, Jill? You start, you're starting, Simon. Very right. badly, Simon. You can't do anything about that this end. Um, I would ask uh, you to bear with it, I suppose. It was working okay before. <laughs> It's well. better yeah. when you've got somebody else on there. Not if if Jill's talking. If you leave your mic on, and then when you okay. come back, Simon, you can hear properly. It's we just need one okay. other person with their mic on. You Could I suggest right. then that um, it, sorry, you Simon leave your mic on permanently, and then everybody else uh, mute and unmute. Okay, then that will leave one on. Is that okay for everybody now? Yeah, that sounds a lot better. Okay, so. Just to recap, we're doing the council services part of the uh, coronavirus update report, and I've asked cabinet members to comment on uh, how council services are holding up in their particular area. And I've called Jill Wary to speak first. Um, well, I just first of all, I'd just like to say I think we're doing a brilliant job with the in response to this COVID pandemic, and um, for me, it's been totally reassuring at all stages. Um, I feel that all the services have been maintained, um, officers. The members have been protected and at all times we've been kept up to date with things. I mean the two items in my portfolio are the Jubilee 2 and the museum and obviously they've been closed now since the 20th of March like most other places that's uh, over eight weeks now. Um, staff have been redeployed and they've been helping on the um, helpline to the vulnerable people and um, I think we talked about the recovery a bit later in the report. Do you want me to cover that then? Yeah. Yes thank you. Yeah. I'm going to go to Trevor now, Trevor Johnson. Okay then, thank you, Leader. Uh, well, Street Scene, I've just got to say that they have performed brilliantly through this crisis. By being flexible and reactive, we've managed to put on a face of normality. We've had very, very few complaints. There's, I think there's one from an opposition councillor about bird droppings on a seat in the creme, and I think that's the most serious complaint we've had. Okay, thanks. Okay, thank you, Trevor. 
yes, I think um, those frontline services are really held up well across your area. I think uh, well done to Dave Adams and his team for, for the work they've done on that. I'm going to bring in Steve now. Steve Sweeney. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, uh, Lee. Um, a couple of things I can, I can highlight for me. Um, the support for businesses. Uh, the report, it says uh, 18 and a half million to 1,600. We aren't going it's on now, to that yet, Steve. We aren't on that yet, Steve. We're on we? the account services bit. Yeah. All oh, right. Well, taxi licensing is carrying on. Taxi license is carrying on. We're not taking any new licenses, but we're just keeping the system as it is going and it's working well. I love think That's the only thing that's on mine. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And Paul. Uh, thank you, Lena. Yes, it's been uh, an important team effort, I think, really. Um, and hats off to the way that the, the staff have risen to the challenge, um, been redeployed to on new uh, responsibilities, which has been uh, important in keeping the, the facilities going, particularly uh, impressed with the waste management system that has uh, continued in the, uh, the rural area to good effect. Uh, I've had virtually no complaints whatsoever about the services during this time and it's, it's a credit to all involved that, um, that, that they've managed to pull together to time like this and um, I, I've got nothing but appreciation for all of them. Thank you. Thank you Paul and echo that. Uh, Helena, anything on, on the services you're in charge of? I know we're coming on to the uh, response for, to, to the people, the vulnerable people in a bit, so if you can hold that for anything else you'd like to say about after council services, Helena? Just to echo what everybody else has said, I think, um, you know, we are in the, we're still in that sort of unprecedented but a new normal time, as it were, with, with this going on. And I think that the way that staff have either been redeployed and had to step up to a different role, or those who are already in role have actually managed, you know, stepped up and continue services going, I think is, is commendable. So, you know, I'd just like to say thank you to them. Okay, thank you, Helena. We'll go on to the second part of this, which is support for the most vulnerable. Um, as we said last time, um, a massive effort going on across the borough, as there is across the country, to support those the most vulnerable in our communities and at all levels, uh, um, whether it's at a county level, at a, a support staff, say um, the Realise Foundation, right through to our council staff, right through to councils on the front line. There's a massive amount of work going on. There's still a lot to do as we move towards recovery. Uh, but I'll open it up for Helena just to talk about um, the support for the vulnerable in more detail, Helena. Oh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, again, you know, it, it's hats off to the team for their continued work that um, they're doing on this, identifying the most vulnerable and working with them along with our other agencies to ensure that they are being looked after and provided for and, and things are being put into place to help them to continue um, on their da daily basis. Um, Jill's already mentioned about the, the staff from J2 that are on the helpline and they've, you know, they've stepped up and yourself, you just uh, mentioned about um, the Realise um, inquiries as well. They've started to reduce down, uh, which is a, a positive because obviously people are, um, well, it would suggest that they're actually sort of finding the ways uh, around it either themselves or by with the continued support mechanisms that have been put in to place. Obviously, there is always going to be more that needs to be done or could be done. And the longer that this goes on for, you know, we might see um, some growing numbers in certain areas that might require our help elsewhere. So, you know, we're, we're still going, everybody's then the, the homeless team, uh, and rough sleeper team are going around and showing that those um, people are being looked after as well as you know the vulnerability hub is still there and although numbers are up it is still it's a manageable number for for the team to be able to to deal with so um you know congratulations to them in this in this time that we're, we're currently working in thank you helena anybody else like to say anything about the uh, support for the vulnerable you got uh, Paul with his hand up. Yes, Paul. Thank you, Leader. Yes, I think, you know, everybody uh, in times like this needs to, to understand that uh, the vulnerable are first to uh, 
to full foul of, of lockdown procedures and it's important that we've, we've made sure um, and the, cab the cabinet made sure that um, through the, the offices to make sure that all the cracks are um, filled in terms of picking up those that need support. Um, obviously we've had to um, to liaise with the support services, but we've also had to liaise with the county council in terms of um, disputing um, support um, that is so, so vital uh, in a time like this. And we're not out of the woods yet in terms of our, our support package. And uh, we, we need to make sure that we don't relax the effort and um, continue with the way that we have been going to provide that great cover and that umbrella to make sure that people are looked after and uh, are given that consideration in terms terms of uh, support so uh, I, I welcome this it's detailed in the in the, the report there but I also would like to, to add the, the support for businesses which partly comes under my my remit but um, we know that the government have put in place um, a comprehensive support packages for small business but it's been down to us to make sure that it's administered uh, and this is where the borough council have really worked, worked hard to uh, make sure that um, business grants where applicable have been given to the right people uh, at the right time uh, initially we did have a little bit of a hiccup but uh, due to the fact that the the, the sheer amount of um, applications that we, we've got but uh, I could, I, i'm really assured by um, this and also this detail in the report the the cover of the two grant programs um, which the council has uh, obviously received uh, 23 0.87 million to dispute uh, and I'm sure the recovery phase is going to be all, all the more better supported by this approach from the, the council and this administration so I'm looking forward to actually engaging and uh, looking to, to lift up the, the restrictions with the government as it's rolled out in terms of supporting local businesses which are going to be vital for our local economy and obviously for the, the income of the council. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. I'll bring in Steve now as we moved on to the support for business. You've been obviously overseeing this area as portfolio holder. Would you like to give an update? Yeah, the latest latest figure I've been given is um, the report says 18 and a half million. It's now 18.935 million. And it was 1,600, it's now 1,655. So that's 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 going on all along. This is all, this is all um, government money that we've, we've passporting out to people as opposed to or council taxpayers' money. Um, the second thing I'd like to say really is that um, we've received a grant from the government for £1.3 million. Um, one of our useful things that is we know Robert Jenrick, the Minister Concerned, because he was our um, parliamentary candidate here a few years ago and it doesn't do any harm. Um, but also, you know, we're thankful for that. We're also very thankful to our two our local MPs who've been lobbying hard for this money. And uh, that's how it ended up. If you're jumping ahead on the agenda, let's talk about the support for business first. Um, okay, so I mean, as you pointed out there, a, a real effort really put in by our staff and I think we really let's pay tribute to them. Some of them worked till late into the evening and also over the weekend to get through these, these, these business grant applications to a, you know, a lot of issues of um, different complexities that have really slowed down some of the applications. But as you said, Steve, we're getting through a, a massive amount of them at the moment. So I think that is a, putting out that, um, you know, as you say, over 18.5 million now into into businesses to keep them going during this period and that's what we as a district council have been asked to do by the government and we've delivered along with other district councils um, that and the work still goes on and of course the scheme a new scheme is about to start as well which will um, be more discretionary for us and we were putting that together and waiting some information from the government before we start to um, you know sort of pick up the uh, the ones that weren't eligible under the previous uh, grant scheme to ensure that uh, other businesses get their money to be able to them to see them through this so that they can reopen in the recovery later in the year and start up their businesses again um, and fully obviously and, and employing people across the borough as well we've seen the employment rates raise uh, across the county and in the borough as well we hope that that's in a, a nick up which will as soon as recovery gets up and running um, jobs will will reappear again and we'll do all we can to keep businesses going during that period uh, moving to the financial impact obviously this is a council financial impact. We've uh, had many issues um, with uh, lost income, of course, uh, such things as J2, as, as um, Jill has talked about, lack of car parking income, as are just two really to talk about the market closed, etc. cetera. Um, but as Stephen said, we did have the um, 
in a total, we've had 1.3 million from the government, which has been been handy just at the right time to come and help us to see us through the next few months. Of course, we, we're looking out to the future and we're continuing to monitor the budgets and also continuing to lobby uh, via our MP and also by the, um, the District Council's network government, uh, central government, to ensure that local councils get uh, reimbursed for the funding uh, which we are spending on uh, the coronavirus uh, pandemic and the effects of that and still has an impact upon us and uh, we will be monitoring that going forward. Anything to add Steve? Uh, not really, no, you said everything I was going to say. Okay, thank you. Any other comments on the financial uh, impact from portfolio elders? Paul? Thank you, Chair. Yes, it's, it's not going to be an easy route out of this. Uh, there's going to be some challenges ahead and we, we need to make, make sure that we're very savvy in terms of uh, um, tapping into things that are available to support, uh, particularly the people that um, weren't eligible for the business grants, because, uh, you know, we've got to look at the whole picture um, and the whole of the, 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 the businesses and the population that, uh, that's, that we serve. Um, and we need to make sure that we we're mindful of the fact that this is going to be a tough journey for a lot of people, um, and we need to to be able to to react to that when when the, the the need for help occurs. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments on the financial impact at the moment? No. Okay. We'll move on to the uh, recovery, which is on uh, uh, item three of it, and um, we've broken it down into a number of uh, work streams. We're really meeting the essential recovery. Uh, foundations for the recovery, uh, the reopening and safe uh, reopening of the uh, town centres and retail centres across the borough, that's Newcastle, Kids Grove, uh, areas such as Wolfstanton, Shesterton and all the other shopping parades within the borough. They will have a very um, um, difficult task of reopening with social distancing and week planning, that's already taking place, working with the bid in Newcastle and uh, reaching out to Kids Grove and the other um, district centres as well to ensure that people can return to the shops and businesses can reopen safely uh, with social distancing. Support for health and well-being is another in, important area which I'm sure Han can talk more about and has done already. The economic recovery, uh, obviously our High Streets Fund, um, Future High Streets Fund and the town deals, the government has already indicated they are key for getting money back into areas such as Newcastle for us to to spend that money on recovery of our town centre and, and, and our businesses and our business areas and uh, ensuring Newcastle really gets going again after this. And also stepping up council services and bringing council services back online that we've had to uh, either change or, or cease during this period. I'm sure cabinet members, when I bring them in, will, will, will um, detail more of those. And also the financial recovery from this, already talked about it, um, just what a, again, a, a big issue not just for the council but also for, for businesses and organisations across the borough to recover financially from this and we'll be we were having a plan to work with businesses and work with the bid in the town also with the county and others to, to ensure we, we get financially sound after this. Um, our recovery plan is called back on track because um, our council plan we were in the second year of our four year council plan that has been knocked off track of course by this and we want to get back on track with the ambitious plans that were in there. And this um, recovery plan, which we're putting together and we're now um, being put into um, motion, will help us to do that. So we're going to up now to uh, cabinet members. Uh, first of all, start with Trevor on the stepping up of council services, because some of those frontline services are in your area, Trevor. So over to you. Okay, can you hear me all right, Leader? Because the sound yeah. quality is terrible. The okay. sound quality is terrible. I yeah. hardly heard what you said. Nothing more. So I'm going to give you an update on the recycling, yes? Yes, please. Right. And as we're all aware, our waste recycling and garden waste teams have risen to the challenge of this COVID pandemic magnificently, and I cannot thank them enough. And I believe that if we had tried to rely on our Rome equipped fleet with all the distancing measures and the additional staff we would have needed, we would have sunk without trace. To our advantage, we were well advanced with the modelling of the new service and that, with adaptions, we were able to bring it online. We have been so successful, we have made the decision to officially launch the new service virtually with immediate effect. At the end of next week, we will begin delivery of the new recycling bins and bags throughout the borough. The new service will roll out over eight weeks, so that by August the 3rd, 
everyone in the borough will be on the new service. We are developing a plan where residents can start using the new bins and bag system as soon as it has been delivered. We may be short of sufficient split back freighters at the start and have to revert back to the standard freighters we've been using through the pandemic. Anyway, uh, the material will still be recycled and so should not affect the residents' happy, uh, habits when putting out their recycling. We may have a few hiccups along the way as this is a major service change. However, I am confident that the huge benefits of the new service will become apparent. Thank you. Thank you, Trevor. Yes, an, an important point there. I think the changes we've had to make during the, the pandemic to the recycling uh, services really tested out the new system we were going to bring in. And you're quite right there, we move ahead now with uh, delivering people's new bins and then they can start using them at their next collection. Um, so the messaging will be going out to people and the new bins will, will arrive in the next couple of weeks and then, and then uh, be rolled out across the borough for the next month or so after that. So um, thank you for that, Trevor. And that's an important part of the recovery that we're getting up and running straight away on this. And I think what we, we've seen through this is, is that the new system will be resilient to the amounts of waste we're putting forward. There's a bigger capacity bin and a big capacity bag, which will um, help people to, to recycle on that fortnightly basis, which they'll be, be going to on the new system. We're bringing Jill now on, on day two museum, etc. Hi, thank you, Leader. Um, I agree with Trevor that the sound here is terrible, so I'm not hearing very well. Um, in relation to Jubilee 2 and the museum, obviously we've been closed uh, for all this time. Um, I would just really like to reassure people that um, Work is ongoing in preparation for the opening of these facilities and like everywhere else people in Newcastle are just desperate to get back to some sort of normality and they are missing being able to go to the gym or the pool. Um, J2 and the museum are not expected now to reopen until uh, at the very earliest, uh, the beginning of July, so that's six weeks or possibly another eight weeks. Um, and of course we've had the muse museum development project to think about in that time. Um, so just during this time we will be carrying out the risk assessments and looking at health and safety measures and getting the buildings up and ready to go um, and really I just again want to just reassure people that um, as soon as we can and it's safe to do so by putting the COVID safety practices in place we will be reopening J2 and the museum as soon as we possibly can. Um, I've written to all the uh, management of the community centres offering support for when they are going to be reopened and as regards the uh, recovery plan for opening the town centre shops and that I will be assist assisting with the kids grow measures to do that. Thank you. Thank you Jill. I'm going to bring in Stephen now um, following on from um, obviously um, the, the town centre issue and the, the restarting of, of our town centre Steve. Yeah, I think we, we, we're working well with the, uh, with the bid and the traders on this, especially, especially the market part of it. But really, until we get the, uh, the say go from the government and this is the day you can reopen, um, it's, it's, it'd be nice if we had a day that we could work towards as opposed to putting in plans, which is what we're doing at the moment. There's things like social distancing, there's a queuing, there's trying to turn the market stores around to face inwards rather than outwards to give people the chance to queue at shops. Um, getting new store holders in, but it, it really, we, we could do, when the government give us a day, say, yeah, you can reopen the markets on such and such a date, then it's all systems go. But the planning needs to be done first so that when we do get the uh, get the button to go, we can we can get it straight on. With it. And that's what the officers are working on at the moment. OK, thank you, Steve. I think what we've got to realise as well, it's going to be um, obviously a, a staged reopening with different businesses opening at different times, such as the hairdressers and the barbers, you would imagine. And, and some of the bars, etc. restaurants will be last on that list, I, I should imagine to open. Um, but thank you for that, Steve. Going to bring Paul in now. Thank you, Leader. Yes, uh, just echoing um, what Councillor Sweeney has just mentioned in terms of it's going to be, a, you know, a phased reopening. We've got to go at the pace of uh, individual businesses and their requirements and how they interact with the public and making sure that everybody is protected and safe during this. Uh, so just say social distancing but we need to make sure we we're there to support and guide uh, local businesses with uh, maintaining that social distancing and, and they've got a bit of work to do with this it's not going to happen overnight this is going to be something that's on a massive scale we haven't seen before 
um, and something that isn't going to happen overnight. It's going to be sort of a, a try and see sort of uh, sort of scenario, I should imagine, because there hasn't been a template uh, that exists that we've been able to to apply for this. There isn't one that exists nationally uh, or locally. Um, this is something that uh, is is going to have to be a bespoke to our local scene in terms of making sure that we can return to near normal status uh, in lockdown over a time period that's uh, as yet undetermined um, because we've got to reevaluate the success of uh, of um, social distancing and the measures that are in place and to make sure that we're getting that feedback where it doesn't work and addressing it as we go. Um, so as soon as we get that um, that go ahead from government and then the guidance that the government are going to roll out over the next um, uh, few months and over the next year, we need to make sure that we, we're stepping up council services in line with um, the capabilities, but in to make sure that we, we're reopening the safe and successful retail uh, side of the town to make sure that we um, can uh, get back mum of normality I don't think it's going to exist uh, the previous normality but it's going to be new normality that uh, that we're going to be bringing up so um, I'm looking forward to it although this, it's going to be a hell of hard work by all involved and uh, no easy task to to get this online but at least we can put those foundations of recovery in place now so we can bridge between the response phase and the recovery phase that's been in, in place and focusing and uh, ensuring that the council and the communities and the business sector are in the best position uh, in the very short term to effectively engage with the recovery process thank you leader thank you paul and then helena do you want to add anything thank you thank you leader uh, nothing much really i think council sweeney and council northcott have pretty much covered all my little notes that i was making um that i was going to say anyway i mean it is true we've we've been in testing times up to this point and i think there are more testing times ahead of us but obviously you know we, we will be moving forward based on the information and feedback that becomes available to us over the next you know how, however long i suppose from this point onwards to the time that people are, are quite happy and confident to be able to uh, continue trading thank you okay thank you helena so this, this is report, really, the recovery part of the report is the start of a, a long process, which we've all, um, we've all dis just discussed. Um, and uh, this will be, um, what I intend to do is to refer this entire report to a meeting of our scrutiny committees, which will take place during June, um, related to um, obviously their, their work um, of each of the scrutiny committees as per the portfolios of cabinet members uh, for a one-off meeting in June via, um, via virtual uh, means uh, for them to scrutinise um, obviously the, the way council services have held up during this um, this period and also to cast an eye and give some views and advice on the recovery plan going forward. Uh, the chairs of the committees have already been contacted I believe and we'll get those meetings set up so what I'd like to do is, is move the recommendation in this report uh, that we note and endorse the work undertaken and then secondly that um, we refer the elements of the recovery program that are relevant to uh, the scrutiny committees to them for their review and also for um, comments going forward on the recovery program. Does everybody agree? Agreed. Agreed. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, moving then to our next item, item five, which is the pre valuation checking scheme. This is in Paul's portfolio. So, to Paul. Thank you, uh, Leader. Uh, uh, just wish to co just correct you. It's the pre-validation uh, checking scheme. Um, this is for the cabinet to approve this. Um, the reason for introducing this slight amendment to the uh, the planning services is to introduce a pre-validation checking service, uh, very similar to what one would expect if you if you paid the post office to check your um, pass support application before submitting it it's, it's a way of fast tracking and ensuring a quality document so when it does get to the other end um, it, it results in a more timely and accessing um, before prospective planning applications can be registered and assessed the decision has to be made on the merits of the scheme um, by using this service uh, an applicant can make sure that officers will 
to check that they've got all the documents and um, the necessary paperwork and information in place to um, ensure that the, the validation process is, is, is a very quick one. Um, because in the past, it, it, it tends to be, particularly with more complex major applications, this, this becomes more apparent between having to go back uh, to seek out bits of information that hasn't been supplied at the validation stage. So it's a fee, it's a relatively small fee in the, in the scheme of things, but it's a fee nonetheless to cover the officer's time. And it's to ensure a fast tracking service in terms of the validation before it gets to an application stage. So the, the report is in detail uh, uh, there. There's no risk really to the council. Uh, the council could do nothing and, and, and you know, carry an ad hoc service that it provides now. But it's, it's felt that this new service will give a quality to the, uh, the applicants and the applications that are coming in uh, right at the very beginning of the process and hence cut down the overall time not just just for the applicants but the the determination time um, equally as the process so that's there in front of you with chair i um i got this for comments from uh, cabinet members thank you chair Thank you, Paul. Yes, completely endorse this report you've, you've just presented there. And I think um, this has been long in, in, in the uh, preparation. It's not just because of, of, of what's happening at the moment, but I think it will help us with the recovery as well. It will help applications, particularly some of the more complicated applications and the larger applications to come forward and, and, and uh, be correct at the time and, and get a, a planning app, uh, permission sooner than otherwise probably would have been the case if there were errors or there were, there were issues with the application. So I'm more for this and I think it's, it's a great move forward for, um, for us and those that want to use the service can do to um, obviously so we can get better development and quicker development across the board. Steve, you've got your hand up. Yeah, thank you. No, I endorse everything that uh, the Paul News has just said. Um, I was going to say about the passport thing because it does remind me of all the world, like when you go for a passport, you get the same sort of idea. Um, I was going to say that as well. It's also worth pointing as well, there's no charge for household applications submitted by a member of the public. For their own property, I think that's worth pointing out as well. Thank you. Yeah. Any other comments on on the report that Paul's introduced there? I don't see any. Okay. Paul's moved the recommendation now that we approve the new pre-validation checking arrangements and associated charging scheme. Do we all agree? Yep. Agreed. Agreed. Brilliant. Thank you. Uh, moving then to our next item, which is the financial performance report and performance report quarter four on page 19 of the agenda. We'll deal with the financial side of the report first and I'll hand over to Steve for his report. Yeah, thank you, Leo. Um, the revenue budget position um, is as stated in 3.2. Obviously, Jubilee, Jubilee 2's hit us. It sort of fell off a cliff and although it was shut on the 21st, um, its, it's um, income was, was, was disappearing well before that because, because of the COVID thing. Income and car parking down. Well, it's all written down here. Income and planning applications. That's what that's what um, that's what hit us really. The capital program's all right. The capital program is actually slightly underspent. It's it's the revenue one that's that's caused the problem, and it's it's all as as identified in here. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any comments on the finance report? There, I think we, we've discussed finance before uh, under the COVID report. We'll move on to the performance data. I think as Steve has just intimated, of course, that the latter end of this, this, this quarter we're looking at, which is the last quarter, was hit uh, probably from March 20th onwards by the, the whole coronavirus COVID-19 impact. So when we look at the performance, we're looking back at a time mostly when things were, were, were normal and proper. And we had probably for the first time, we got up to 86% of the indicators on target. And uh, when we say back on track for our recovery, I think we've got to aim to be back there as soon as possible, you know, allowing um, really for, for, for the virus and the recovery from that to that point. Um, but I'm going to go through like we usually do each, each page of the performance data, um, starting with the local services that work for local people uh, page and uh, the indicators that are, are under that. And just one thing I'd like to point out is as, as a result of the the crisis in which we're in now, the website and the social media impact to the council has increased as people, you know, search for information, search for services via the website and also through our social media links. I think a tribute to the team that, that managed that really during this time 
uh, they are down in numbers and they're dealing with um, obviously media inquiries as well as social media during this period and keeping people in touch and providing information, particularly on the business grants issue, which was some tricky cases came forward on that. And I think that's a tribute to them and also to, to the council keeping, keeping the messages going out to people and also on any changes we had to make to recycling or other services has been a success on that. Um, I mean, looking at um, Trevor, do you want to say anything about the, um, the, the street scene and the recycling? I think we've really said enough on those, Trevor. I think you're right there. I'm just trying to pull it up on my phone because I can't get it on my other device. Yes. But no, I mean, all, all our indicators are looking excellent. I'm, I'm delighted. OK, thanks, Lee. Yes, looking back to that period. Yeah, I think also uh, um, customer services and IT, ICT, we bolstered our customer services, obviously, through this crisis. So I think we talked about earlier, J2 staff, uh, you know, helping with the vulnerability calls and also with, with, with the business grants. That's seen um, us bolster that area. So we can provide that service, whether it's online or via the phone, because, of course, Castle House and Kids Grove um, Customer Centre have been closed since the end of March because of the, the pandemic. Over onto the, uh, the third section on page 30. Uh, you've got a few there, Steve, to do with revs and bends. Again, looking back to a period before the crisis, but have you got any comments on those? Uh, no, they're, they're, they're excellent. And I say it every time, they're excellent, and they still are. Thank you. Yeah, and let's hope we can get back to that. Uh, back we can. Those when we, we're up and running again. Moving to our second priority, which is growing our people and places. A raft of, um, of indicators there and a story to tell on a number of those, which I'll hand over to Paul. Uh, yeah, thank you, Leader. Um, uh, generally, I'm, I'm quite impressed with the, the, the planning uh, team, working very closely with the new head of planning uh, that's maintained and fostered uh, an invigorated new um, working environment and it's, this has resulted in um, our figures being very good. I bet this was this recorded in the quarter just before we entered the uh, the lockdown situation. So it may, may dip um, for the next quarter. Uh, but notable um, areas that should be mentioned is the uh, we continue to deliver the joint local plan. We did plan to go out for consultation for um, the policy section, but we've we've put that back now in terms of uh, when that's going to happen, and, and that will coexist now with the, the sites part of the the joint local plan when it comes forward in the late autumn. Um, progress is still contained with the university growth corridor we're still making uh, inroads in terms of uh, scoping and uh, the viability of that uh, and whether we can um, take that forward in the future um, we're also keen to note that um, the, the one public estate is still going to be um, uh, very much uh, focused in mind as will the, the future high streets when that when we emerge from the lockdown we're going to be making sure that we um, with our officers, um, with the, the help of uh, Simon McKenney, that um, he, he makes sure the, the, the bids are still in there in a timely fashion to support our aspirations. Um, we've also got an equally um, consideration of our investment model, uh, particularly in property which we're looking at, and the master planning that we're bringing forward, uh, <coughs> both some Bradwell crematorium in the near future. Um, obviously, we've got Keel Golf, Golf Course and Birchingwood to look at, but it, it, this is a this is an administration that are not going to be sitting back. That when we we, we need to uh, re enter the recovery phase at full pelt, we're going to have things lined up, ready to go. That are to coin a phrase, and I don't really like to use oven ready. Uh, I think that's uh, it's terrible, but I will I will borrow it in this case because nothing else that springs to mind. But uh, in terms of that, we need to have these things in place to make sure that the council can sustain itself moving forward. So I'm pleased to report that the the planning area is is doing quite well. Obviously, there's there's a few um, misses in there. You know, we haven't had the the inquiries in terms of property searches, so income has been down from from that area. But now. Uh, there's early indication that that is recovering to how we normally expect at this time of year with people looking at the possibility of moving again as restrictions are lifted. So I'm pleased to report that we're showing a, a, a united front across the planning uh, service. It's maintaining its uh, impetus and um, 
hasn't suffered as much as we thought it would during the, the lockdown. So I'm pleased to report that it's, it's fairly healthy. Obviously, as I've previously stated, the indicators may be down slightly because of the, the amount of applications, but they are still coming in. Uh, and in particular, the major ones are still there on the peripheries. Thank you, Leader. Thank you, Paul. Yeah, I think a testament to people who are working from home, isn't it, in businesses that they can still do the, you know, the desk work, desktop work at home for applications and get them in. And we've seen you know, a healthy list of um, applications coming in most weeks during this. And probably people at home are thinking about planning for extensions and they've seen they probably need an extension because they're, they're stuck, in, stuck in the house with, with family. They probably thought about a two-story extension or something on their house and are putting plans in for that to uh, bring uh, about after the lockdown is over. So thank you for that, Paul. Moving on to our priority number three on page 33, Health and Active and Safe Borough. Um, I'll start with Helen on this. There's a, there's a raft in your portfolio there. We've touched on a lot of them already. Are any updates on, on, uh, from yourself about the, the last quarter performance, Helen? Uh, thank you, uh, Leader. Um, I caught kind of the tail end of that. There was a little bit of distortion on there. But, um, you know, again, it, I can't, I, I can't really sort of praise the team high enough, really. I'm going to be honest that all this working from home, but still actually being able to um, maintain connections with with um, our partners, including the police and everything else, to be able to um, keep on top of any antisocial behaviour cases or any uh, vulnerable person referrals. Um, as it as it stands at the moment, um, as it says in the report, you know we've we, we've we've got some cases that have that. Um, we've discussed with regards to the antisocial behaviour, but we've got the, the police are doing more um, rounds and trying to engage and using dispersal notices. Um, new CCTV in the area is also helping with, with that. And as far as uh, the referrals being uh, for vulnerable, they're actually down um, from where it was sort of around about roughly the same time as this time last year. So. We've got you know a total number of 27 that have been made that was from the first quarter to, to 31st of march so i'm I, you know I'm, I'm happy with them you know it's like everybody else's uh officers and the, the teams that we work they're all working from home and yet they're all still being able to manage the cases as they're coming in the workload and are delivering the you know the results for us as they can thank you helena jill Thank you, Leader. Yeah, yeah, just in relation to the performance indicators um, for Jubilee 2 and uh, the museum, uh, obviously these are the services that have been most severely impacted by because, you know, they're closed, the buildings are closed. Um, the membership of J2, uh, we were putting a lot of effort into that uh, before COVID hit and memberships at the moment are currently frozen, but work is currently being done to maintain the ones that we have and then as soon as um, we get open we'll be working on generating new ones as soon as possible. That's it, thank you. Okay, thank you Jill. Uh, moving on to priority number four, Town Centre for All. I think this is one which is completely decimated by the, the coronavirus uh, issue since the uh, 30th of March, Steve, but uh, obviously there's a uh, couple for you in there. Any comments on those? Uh, apart from the fact that um, the the High Streets Fund and the town the town deals are going through, um, which I think is a good thing for us, and the plans are in place for reopening the towns. Like I say, we just need to know the date when we can go live with it. But the as long as the plans are in place, then it shouldn't take too long from when we get told that we can we can kick back into place. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Steve. So um, we were asked to note, obviously, the um, the report and to challenge the council's performance. Well, as I say, we were up to 86% uh, of our indicators uh, coming into um, the coronavirus pandemic. And obviously to get back on track, uh, as soon as um, things begin to get back to normal, we'll be working to do that as portfolio holders and as a council with our officers to, to achieve that. So can we all agree recommendations in the report? Agree. Agree, thank you. Okay, going back to the um, agenda is item number seven, which is our forward plan. It is attached 
um, for us there. Obviously, uh, a number of items that we, we're going to be discussing in Cabinet over the next uh, three months are all detailed there on, I believe, page 41, page 42, and page 43. Does anybody have any comments on, on those? No, okay. So can we agree the formal plan or agreed? Agreed. Thank you. Agreed. Uh, moving to item eight, urgent business. We don't have any urgent business. Um, item nine, disclosure of the public. No need because we don't have any uh, confidential items. And then finally on the agenda, I haven't received any um, applications to speak by uh, members of the public or um, by councillors. So that concludes the uh, cabinet agenda today. Sorry if there are some sound issues. I think we'll sort them out next time. It's to do with, I think, hosting and not hosting meetings because the pre-meeting was, was fine uh, for, for volume. And um, I would like to thank uh, councillors for attending uh, remotely and also officers and also for those members of the public and fellow councillors that are in the, the public lobby. But we'll call this meeting to a close. Thank you.